let's show some love to this beautiful enzyme ribulose bisphosphate carboxylase oxygenase otherwise known as rubisco it is after all the most abundant protein slash enzyme found on earth and what does this enzyme do it is involved in the calvin cycle as we learned in the previous video about calvin cycle this enzyme is basically involved in fixing the atmospheric carbon into a form that can be used by plants to produce energy basically sugars in the form of glucose and other carbohydrates so this enzyme this beautiful enzyme has binding sites for both carbon dioxide and oxygen of course this doesn't mean that both can bind at the same time both carbon dioxide and oxygen can bind at the same time no it means that at a time either carbon dioxide or oxygen can bind to this enzyme this is not always good i'll explain in just a while why it is not but before we move on to that let's first understand the reactions that would occur if carbon dioxide bound to rubisco and oxygen bound to rubisco so rubisco is capable of performing two different functions when carbon dioxide is binding to the enzyme the process that occurs is known as carboxylation and when oxygen is binding to the enzyme the process that occurs is known as oxygenation now carboxylation is a reaction that you must be quite familiar with if not go and check out our video on the calvin cycle so basically during calvin cycle carboxylation takes place where carbon dioxide and rubp if you remember from the previous video this is ribulose bisphosphate these two react in the presence of rubisco to give pga or phosphoglyceric acid and this pga is then converted to g3p which is then used to produce glucose so this is a normal process that occurs in the form of the calvin cycle this is all fine but what if oxygenation occurs you might be wondering why i have drawn this funny image here i'll get to that in just a while so when oxygenation occurs instead of carbon dioxide and rubp reacting oxygen and rubp react in the presence of rubisco and instead of just giving pga another substance known as phosphoglycolate is also produced along with pga but what happens now is that because of the production of this phosphoglycolate the number of carbon atoms needed to produce glucose decreases basically this phosphoglycolate steals the carbon atoms needed to produce glucose as a consequence more number of these pgas must be produced so that they have enough number of carbon atoms to produce glucose so that results in an increased atp usage if you remember from the calvin cycle in the reduction phase of the cycle and in the regeneration phase of the cycle atp is used to produce more and more pga it would use more atp and it would decrease the efficiency of carbon fixation and other resources like water their consumption would also increase so this process where oxygen binds to rubp in the presence of rubisco to give phosphoglycolate and pga is known as photorespiration and it is not something that plants require now i'll come to this diagram to explain why imagine you're touching your nose is it easier to touch your nose directly from the front of your face or to twist your arm around your head and then touch your nose because that's basically what is happening carboxylation is like touching your nose directly co2 is binding to rubp and then the calvin cycle is continuing photorespiration is like touching your nose from around your head because phosphoglycolate is produced pga is produced and then this pga the enters the calvin cycle and overall the efficiency of carbon fixation is also decreased that's why photorespiration is not beneficial to plants it is actually something that plants a lot of plants try to actively avoid and how do they do that to understand that let's look at the concept of c4 plants so what is a c4 plant and then what is a c3 plant first let's start with c3 
During the process of carboxylation, when carbon dioxide reacts with RUBP, if the first product in carbon fixation is a 3 carbon compound like 3 phosphoglyceric acid or PGA, then the plants in which this process occurs are known as C3 plants because the first product in carbon fixation is a 3 carbon product. In contrast, in C4 plants, the first product that is formed as a result of carbon fixation is a 4 carbon compound. So, essentially carbon dioxide reacts with a 3 carbon compound and then the first product of carbon fixation is a 4 carbon compound. So, that is why these plants are known as C4 plants. And these plants have devised a mechanism to increase carboxylation and to decrease photorespiration. How does that work? To understand that, let's take a look at the anatomy of C4 plants, specifically their leaves. So, here we have an image of a C4 plant, maize. So, if you take a look at the leaf anatomy, you have these mesophyll cells. The mesophyll cells, if you remember, are, are parenchymatous cells which have chloroplasts, which means that the light dependent reactions, the photosystem 1 and 2, they also take place in the mesophyll cells. But deep within the mesophyll cells is another type of cells known as the bundle sheath cells. So, this violet color uh, cells that you see here, these are the bundle sheath cells. And these bundle sheath cells are found only in C4 plants and not in C3 plants. So, what do these bundle sheath cells do? I'll get to that in just a while. So, basically the mesophyll cells are present within which bundle sheath cells are present and they both enclose the vascular bundle which includes the xylem and phloem in these plants. So, this is the anatomy of C4 plants. With this, let's take a closer look at what happens inside the mesophyll cells and the bundle sheath cells. So, the mesophyll cells are essentially more closer to the stomata, stomatal openings, which means that it is basically closer to the environment. So, what happens is that carbon dioxide diffuses in within the mesophyll cells. And the mesophyll cells have this 3 carbon compound which is known as phosphoenol pyruvate or PEP. So, this carbon dioxide reacts with PEP in the presence of the enzyme PEP carboxylase and produces a 4 carbon compound which is oxaloacetic acid or OAA. So, what happens is now this oxaloacetic acid is converted to another type of 4 carbon compound which is malic acid or aspartic acid or malate or aspartate. So, these compounds, these 4 carbon compounds either malate or aspartate move to the bundle sheath cells through openings in the cell wall known as plasmodesmata. And now here within the bundle sheath cells again malic acid or aspartic acid is converted back to carbon dioxide and PEP. It seems like a very complicated process, isn't it? Because the carbon dioxide reacts with PEP here to give a 4 carbon compound. But again, after coming into the bundle sheet cells, it is converted back to carbon dioxide and PEP. Why is this happening? We'll get to that in just a while. So, once it is inside the bundle sheet cell, there is carbon dioxide which is now free to react with RUBP. So, in C4 plants, RUBP, Rubisco and the entire Calvin cycle takes place within the bundle sheath cells. There is no RUBP or Rubisco in the mesophyll cells at all. The RUBP Rubisco and whatever enzymes are needed for the Calvin cycle are found only within the bundle sheet cells. So, now carbon dioxide reacts with RUBP to form PGA and then the Calvin cycle continues. So, this way these plants have enabled a mechanism to sort of make sure that only carbon dioxide is reacting with Rubisco. Another important aspect of this cycle is the C4 pathway is that oxygen cannot enter the bundle sheet cells. 
this way it, these plants make sure that wherever rubisco is only co2 is present so the concentration of co2 is extremely high in the bundle sheet cells which ensures that only co2 binds to rubisco and oxygen does not bind to rubisco this increases the efficiency of the calvin cycle occurring in the bundle sheet cells which increases the production of glucose and other sugars so so far we've understood how the c4 plants make sure only carboxylation take place but what about the other type of plants what about the c3 plants they don't have this mechanism right they have only one type of cells which is the mesophyll cells and it is within these cells where carboxylation the entire calvin cycle also takes place so let's have a comparison between the c4 and the c3 type of plants so which is better c4 or c3 so examples of c4 plants include maize sugarcane and sorghum c3 plants include rice oats and soybean so the which is better question can be answered with the help of this enzyme rubisco so at higher temperatures there is an increased affinity for oxygen and a lot of these c4 plants grow in high temperature regions where there is less water which means that the region is very arid so these c4 plants grow in regions where there is high temperature and it is highly arid which means there is less water available but the temperature is very high and we just learned that at higher temperatures the affinity for co2 increases in rubisco compared to carbon dioxide so what happens to plants at higher temperatures at as temperatures increases that the guard cells close this stomatal pores to decrease transpiration or water loss through the stomatal pores so as this is happening whatever oxygen is produced as a result of photosynthesis accumulates within the cells so in the case of c4 plants the oxygen accumulates here in the mesophyll cells because that is where the light dependent reactions take place right so oxygen accumulates in the mesophyll cells so as the concentration of oxygen is high in the mesophyll cells if rubisco is present here itself at high temperatures and at high concentrations of oxygen rubisco will tend to bind with oxygen and not carbon dioxide which would lead to photorespiration to avoid that to prevent the accumulation of oxygen where there is rubisco these plants have essentially segregated rubisco in one room and oxygen in another so they make sure that these two don't meet at all they don't come in contact at all so that is why c4 plants have a better survival advantage at high temperature and high arid regions compared to c3 plants because in in these plants in c3 plants there is no segregation of location between where o2 is located and rubisco is located o2 tends to accumulate in the same place where rubisco is present which is why photorespiration is high in these c3 plants so this is an evolutionary advantage for c4 plants that lets them grow in high temperature and highly arid regions